And we are back here on Open. A community school in the borough is providing resources to obtain health care and some other wraparound services here to improve the family's quality of life. Now, join us to tell us a little bit more. We'd like to welcome Ms. Denise Alexander, who's the principal of the Bronx Charter School for Children. And good Pleasure to have to you. Be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Yes. So for people who don't know about the Bronx Charter School for Children, talk to us about it. So we're school, um, one of the first independent charter schools in the Bronx. Um, we are going on our 14th year. Um, we are located in the Mott Haven area of the Bronx, which for parents and educational people is known as community school district number seven. So um, very great school. We're K through five school, kindergarten through fifth grade, mm -hmm. approximately 432 students. Beautiful. Yeah. So uh, K through five. Students get wraparound services, I hear? Yes, so I think one of the things that makes us different from other schools, not just charter schools, um, though de Blasio had this initiative to increase the number of community schools, is the fact that we stay true to our mission in supporting the community. Um, we are trying to increase what we do for the community. So currently, what we're able to offer our families and students are opportunities to support them with wraparound services, be it health care, mental health care, um, just basic supplies, because we understand that if the family is not solid and has that foundation, it's gonna be really hard for our kids to learn and prosper. And so that's the idea, and we are trying to increase that. Um, we have a dynamic family support team with two counselors, a social worker, and so their charge is really to assess what our family's needs are mm -hmm. and to figure out a way that we can support our families. Um, We've seen within the past few years an increase in mothers coming to us, sharing their experiences of domestic violence in the household, um, a lot of families needing support with immigration services, particularly since 2016. And so, um, and, and that's what we're about. We're there to support the families, see what they need, and try to figure out how we can get to them. Walk us through if a family's watching right now saying, listen, you know what, I'm thinking about charter school, because there's a lot of myths to come with charter Absolutely. school. So debunk a couple of those yes. real quick. So I would say the, the number one thing I want to debunk is this idea that charter schools handpick their students, right? Like there's this notion that charter schools can fulfill their mission or they're doing better because they choose students who don't have behavior problems or students who are not students with disabilities, and that is not true. Um, the law in New York says that charter schools have to accept students through a lottery. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on the charter school's program, they might have a preference of a seat. So for instance, there are schools that deal with trauma. They really want to target that trauma population, and so there are set-aside seats through the lottery for students that fit that criteria. Our school in particular has no set-asides. Um, we accept applications three ways. One is through the New York Charter School Center. Two, they can walk into our building and submit an application. And the third way is they can go onto our website and submit an application that way. Um, and we run the lottery, it's audited. Um, we have cameras there that are watching us. Um, and so typically we receive over a thousand applications a year, which is great. It's a mm -hmm. true testament to the work that we're doing. Unfortunately, we really have about I would say 75 seats. So, so a thousand applications. So you can imagine, yes. Wow. And um, there, I have to take that back. There's one set aside preference that we have and that's for siblings. So if we have a student that's currently enrolled and their sibling enrolls or applies through the lottery, there is a weight given to those students. Um, but most of our families, they come in in kindergarten and they remain until fifth grade. Um, but I would not discourage families from applying. If you, if a family finds that they were not selected or they feel like there's some sort of bias going on, they need to complain to the New York Charter School Center because charter schools are not allowed to do that. Um, we, we get who we get through a lottery system. Amazing, amazing. So with the wraparound services, what would you say are the strongest assets that you have as a charter school for people who are in your community? Um, what brought me to the charter world, particularly in New York, was the idea that uh, we have autonomy, right? So we have autonomy on building our program, um, and it was very important for me to find a school that matched my philosophical beliefs. Mm -hmm. I believe that we are responsible for families and community as much as we are for the ABCs and 123s. So I would say that um, you, you know, you, for families, you find someone or you find a school that matches what you believe in and what you want for your kids, and you go for that, right? Um, 
our school, like I said, really prizes our families and partnerships. And so for us, it is when our parents come into our school, they know what they're going to expect. Um, our f teachers do home visits, so they're in the homes of our families. We're really trying to break down the walls of school being just the school. Right. We come in and out. Yeah. Well, Denise Alexander, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. My and pleasure. More information about the Bronx Charter School for Children at the bottom of the screen. You saw it, so make sure you get in touch with her and the school. Taking a quick break, we got more show. Don't go anywhere. We're coming right back in a few.